Maldonado here with the Cherry Picks, and we are at the New York premiere of A Small Light. It tells the story of the unsung heroes who helped Anne Frank's family. Let's go check out the red carpet. So I would love to hear about, you know, what went into the process of bringing Meep to life, you know, what kind of research you did, and wow. what you kind of took away from the role. It's a big question. Um, we got one. Got research <laughs> wise, um, first thing I did was go to Amsterdam because Amsterdam's such an iconic place that operates in a very certain way. And I'd never been to Anne Frank House, so I got my ass to Amsterdam. I got on a bike. I cycled Meep's like, route to work. I cycled the Meep, the route she took Margot through the checkpoint. I went to the Anne Frank House. Um, I read Meep's book, um, Anne Frank Remembered, it's her autobiography. I read that cover to cover a few times. Um, and then beyond that, was just kind of getting stuck into like working with Liev and Joe, you know, being in the scene, being present. I mean, you're playing the iconic Anne Frank, and I want to know like what kind of went into preparing for that role, and what kind of elements did you feel like were really important in preserving when bringing her to life on screen? Well, for me, it was, it was hard. I decided very early on when I got the role that I wouldn't look at any other interpretation of Anne that other actresses have done and I also decided not to read um, Meep's autobiography because I wanted to stay true to Anne so I took her diary and I read it many times I audio booked it as well and I got my mum to read it to me so I had three different versions processing it all at once I, I decided to do this because I wanted to have her true mindset and how she really thought I didn't want to be in a scene and think how would this actress do this scene or how what would Meep think of Anne at this point and how would she think she would react I want it to be how would Anne react to this what would Anne do and how would she do it that is really what I wanted to focus on and probably and just get into the truth of Anne her her grit you know and which was yeah, kind of hard to do I mean I really had to take some days to prepare and get into her before filming I spent a couple of days just trying to be her for as long as I could without breaking out of it and what I really wanted to put forward in this was was her feistiness and her bitiness and you know her opinion she was strong and the the writing in a small light really really goes hand in hand with my research because they allowed that to be shown through they allowed the true and to be shown which is why I fell in love with this project as well as because they were showing her truth and not this facade that people might think she is I want to hear what kind of like preparation went into going into playing like a real person there is a lot of preparation I would say the first thing that I did was I went through all the research that I possibly could. I know that we were doing it from Meep's perspective, so I read her first-hand account, Anne Frank Remembered. I then read Anne's diary again. But I did find it was a bit difficult for Margot specifically because there wasn't so much of her own perspective written. Um, but I did find some letters between her and Anne, and I remember this one letter that was between the two of them where Margot was saying how she didn't have really anyone to talk to. And I remember that was the moment that really just clicked for me. I felt like Margot was a bit misunderstood. And so I think that's the angle that I took on it. And also I researched as much about the Holocaust as possible. I think there's such a weight that comes when you're telling stories like this. And also my grandma is a Holocaust survivor herself. So I, that's exactly what I did. Tony and Joan were so amazing to give us a list of books and movies that helped them write these scripts. And then I just went and looked at those two. Kudos to you. And, you know, you guys did such a great job. And, you know, I'd love to know if you had a favorite or even more challenging scene to film this season. A challenging film to see. Um, I would, I think the challenge of filming the scene when the Frank family is being taken away. There was such a gloomy atmosphere that day. I remember just sobbing really from my own heart. And I think that it's such a sad moment. So that was definitely the most challenging. And also there's a scene where Margot is being brought through a checkpoint and that was my first day filming. So that I think was also very challenging because I just, we were all just getting acquainted and everything. But having Belle as a scene partner was so amazing. She's such an incredible talent, so yeah. Did you learn anything specific from her on set? Absolutely, I think 
that her work ethic is so amazing. She would have 11 to 12 pages of script a day. And also I had the privilege of being able to watch on set with the producers when they were filming episodes or scenes that I was involved in. And so I got to just watch Belle and Joe and Liev and, and just kind of see what they were doing and how they were taking notes. And it was so amazingly helpful as a young actress who's just starting out in this world. I have learned so much from all of them. You know, of course, this this uh, show is focused on, you know, a, a woman who is, you know, an everyday woman making a big change. And um, I was wondering if you have any women in your life that you want to shout out. I think tonight especially, I would love to shout out my grandma, who is a Holocaust survivor. I think that it's so special to be telling this story, for, especially for me and my family. It means so much to us. I know that there were people in her life that allowed her to survive, and I know that Meep was that to the Frank family. So I would love to shout her out today. She's not with us anymore, but, <laughs> but yeah. And, um, you know, this is obviously a, like a biopic historical story. Uh, do you have any favorite biopics outside of this? Ooh, I have loads. I would say... The biopic on, I believe it was Judy Garland, was one of my favorites. I'm obsessed with her. Um, so I would say that, yeah. Now, I want to ask you um, if you could tell us a little bit about you know, what it was like being a part of this project and playing, you know, like historically real people yeah. that have existed and done things in, you know, in history like this. Absolutely. I mean, it's always a, a big pressure and a privilege to play real people, especially a story like this, which has so much historical value and what a hero Meep and Jan were and the Franks. Um, so it, it always feels like you have to do it right. But I think we were always knowing that Tony and Joan and Susanna were going to tell this story the most perfect way that we could imagine. It was, um, it was amazing to be a part of. And now what's interesting is, I mean, your character is, is queer in a time when, you know, a lot of things were going on. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about what that was like, portraying a character like that? Absolutely. I mean, we, uh, we went to the real Café de Monnier, which is where the resistance fighters actually met. And um, there's something very beautiful and timeless about that place and it holds so much history I mean the the guy who who actually did lose his life Willem his final words were let it be known that homosexuals were not cowards and uh, when we shot that scene there wasn't really a dry eye in the house when when that went down because you know the, the history that holds was it was very powerful yeah wow. thank you for sharing that not at all um, and you know uh, I'd love to hear what you hope people take away from this story. Uh, I hope people can see a more, not a more human side, but a, a side that just isn't a kind of stifled historical drama. It, it, I think this show makes it really see that these people were just normal folks who were getting on in, in such an extraordinary time and they didn't think they were heroes. Meep didn't think she was a hero. She said it every time. She was like, I don't want people to think that you have to be special to be a hero. And I think if we can all hold a little of that inside ourselves, you know, stand up for people and, and help each other out because we're, we're all that we have. So I, I hope that people take that. You know, this is, I think, such a great biopic about Meep and, and this story. Do you have any favorite biopics? Any favorite biopics? Uh, well, I was in one about uh, Morrissey, the, the British singer from the Smiths. And I did that. Um, it was called England is Mine. That was really fun. I got to play Johnny Marr, who was the guitarist of the Smiths. And that was cool. And Johnny knew about the film and he'd, he'd sent all his best about it. So that was fun. So I'm going to give myself a plug there. And my mind has completely gone blank about everything else. Yeah, so, yeah just know. plug yourself. We <laughs> love it. And, um, you know, I also wanted to ask, you know, obviously the, the center of this, this story is, is a woman. Um, do you have any women in your life that you just want to shout out that you, that you just love? I would shout out my wonderful mother. She is fantastic. She raised four boys, and now she basically raises 
six grandchildren and has them all the time. She is absolutely fantastic. She lives on a farm in Wales, which is very far away from this high rise in New York City, but she's as cool there as she would be here. Yeah, she's great. What was the inspiration for you guys to, to bring this story to life? Like, how did it connect to you personally? So we were in Amsterdam with our children about seven years ago, and we were reading a plaque about how Meep was very young, just a young woman, newly married, sort of a hot mess when she started working for Otto Frank. And our son was about the same age. And I started to wonder... And also a little bit of a hot mess. <laughs> and I started to just... I suddenly realized that Meep wasn't some special person who knew what she was doing. She was probably... You know, she said yes when Otto Frank asked her. But then I'm sure she had days where she was scared or didn't want to do it, you know, and suddenly we wanted to show the more kind of human side of what it would be like to risk your life for somebody. And so that was kind of our, our guiding principle is to really like strip the cobwebs off the historical story and really make it feel relatable. It definitely was. And I'd love to hear about the creative process for you both. Well, we had the great fortune of working with an amazing director, Susanna Fogel, and then we hired uh, a, a lot of other writers, Bill Harper and Ben Essler and Al Alyssa Jacobson, to come in and help us kind of figure out how in eight episodes we were going to tell this story. We knew that we kind of wanted to focus on those two years that the Franks were in hiding, and then you dig into your research and you say, you know, you lay it out in front of you and say, we've got all of these great stories. How many of them can we get in? Yeah. And how can we have the audience just go on that journey of what it must have been like for them? How challenging was it to get this story off the ground? I mean, anything is challenging these days. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, when we pitched the story, Nat Geo literally instantly we're like oh we get it we see it we are completely behind it and then everything sort of fell into place beautifully in terms of Liev and Bell and Joe Cole these actors that were our sort of first choice also responded to the material and then it was you know then we were kind of off to the races yeah. and and we did it the show quickly and and I think we all had a, a, a really wonderful and meaningful time making the show. You know, I, I love that this is focused on like a, a, an important woman in history that maybe has been overlooked. Is there any like woman in your life that you guys want to like shout out? <laughs> I think that for both of us, our grandmothers were really kind of an inspiration. My grandmother was a contemporary of Meep's, had the same background as Meep, and and so. Uh, the first time I saw Belle in her wardrobe, I, I was kind of taken aback by how he much she like, looked oh like my, my God, grandmother. You look like my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that, but I think that that all of us I know grew up with survivors, and so doing this, being being honoring what they went through, and trying to bring this story to a new generation of viewers, was really what our inspiration was. And so having a partner like Disney Plus who can reach that younger audience, I think is, is incredibly important. Do you guys have like a favorite line or a quote that you like have taken away from the show? Um, hmm, a favorite, like, you know, the line that the title comes from, I mean, it's not in the show, but it's a famous quote of Meeps, where she said, you know, she hated being called a hero. <clears throat> and she said, you, a person shouldn't have to be um, extraordinary to help other people, even a, a teenager or a secretary or a housewife can turn on a small light in a dark room. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And uh, finally, is there anything that you um, hope that people take away from the show? Yeah, we want people to, I kind of want to make um, sacrifice sexy. I mean, I'm joking. But, you know, what Meep did really was a series of, of, of acts of kindness. She brought food, she brought medicine, um, and that was, you know, to do so was risking her life, but she just continued to do the right thing. And she also buoyed everyone's spirits. I mean, their entire emotional support was her and the other helpers coming up there and 
giving them the news and telling them, are things getting better? When are the allies going to come? So it's a tremendous responsibility that I think she didn't quite understand when she said yes. But certainly she stepped up to that responsibility as time went on. What inspired me to direct the show was that I was really moved by the story, but also I was struck by how young Meep was. Um, when I was growing up and I heard her name as like a young Jewish girl growing up, I pictured an old woman because at the time she was an old woman, the real Meep. And then now being an adult, I'm like, oh no, she was a 25-year-old girl who didn't have her life together. She was going out partying with her friends. She couldn't get a job. Her boss asked her to hide his family. She was just a person trying to figure out life. So I found that inspiring, um, you know, just how relatable that character is in any historical time. Um, so the idea of telling this really high stakes dramatic story that could speak to something in the culture now, history repeating itself, the darkness, the nationalism, all the stuff that's happening now, um, you just have to go out your door and read the newspaper to see. The idea of coming at it from this fresh young perspective, um, even if it's transposed back in time, felt really appealing to me. Felt like a way to talk about something now um, in a way that just felt fresh and young. Absolutely. And do you have a favorite or even more challenging scene to film? Um, I love the scene between Meep and Jan in the pilot when they are um, arguing over um, the fact that she didn't tell him th that she had said yes, uh, because it's complicated. They're both good people. They are both human, humanistic people who wanted to do the right thing. They just had different ideas of how to, how to be an ally. And that debate felt really nuanced to me. It wasn't like one person's right and one's wrong. It was a really, it felt like a real fight between a couple, which I found really intriguing and a good way into just an intellectual um, debate over how do you help people, you know? Do you help by being in the system and helping from within the system? Do you help by going totally outside the system? Do you put your own safety on the line or do you make little incremental changes? So those are debates that I think are relevant now too. And um, what do you hope that people take away from the show as a whole? I hope that people watch the show and think, oh, some of what was going on in the world is going on in the world now. Some of these little warning signs that things were getting bad are happening now. This is not ancient history. I mean, it felt like ancient history in the 80s and 90s when we're like, well, thank God we're not like that anymore as a, as a culture. Now things are sort of creeping back. Um, and I, I want people to see it and think, wow, that doesn't feel like a stodgy period piece. That feels like, it's like something I saw yesterday. And I should be, I should have my eyes open about what's going on and see if there's ways that I can help combat what is kind of a dark time and, in culture, you know. What kind of work went into composing music for this show? Yeah, you know, it's Meep was such an amazing force and a historic figure, but she was also an ordinary woman. And so the, uh, the score was very much illustrating how ordinary she was and how her extraordinary actions changed so many people. And so um, the music reflects a lot of that uh, playfulness and, and imperfection, a beautiful imperfection. Do you have a favorite scene that you scored? Yes, it's very late in the season. Um, it's when the annex is being stormed. And um, it was a really challenging but really rewarding. Lots of tonal balances, um, external panic, internal panic. It was really a wild roller coaster to score. So, uh, Is there anything else you want to share about your process? This was an amazing honor. Um, uh, just beyond words. <laughs> I worked with some amazing musicians. We kept it really small and humble purposefully, but um, it was just, it was so lovely to get to express Meep's playfulness. Thank I want to hear um, about like your connection to this story and, and what made you want to music supervise and just like the creative process behind that for the show. Um, you know, I listened to most of the songs that we covered on the show with my bubby. Um, Bubby Blanche um, when she was living in Palm Springs and she would put the Victrola on and we would listen to records and so these songs were very much in my wheelhouse and I think that's what initially attracted me to the story and then when I found out that it was about Meep Geese and, and, and Frank and you know how she was just such an amazing person and just kind of an ordinary person doing extraordinary things I kind of jumped at the chance to work on it so I feel very lucky that I was able to work on this project. I love that. And what do you hope people take away from it? And I hope that people take away that, at least what I took away from it was that family 
is so important. Family and friends and standing up for what you believe in is so important. And really, you know, rallying around your community, you know? Thanks for hitting the red carpet with me. I'm Kristen Maldonado for The Cherry Picks. And A Small Light hits National Geographic on May 1st and will be streaming the next day on Hulu and Disney+. Plus.